You're listening to The Secure Developer. It's part of the DevSecCon community, a platform for developers, operators, and security people to share their views and practices on DevSecOps, Dev and Sec collaboration, cloud security, and more. Check out devsecon.com to join the community and find other great resources. This podcast is sponsored by Sneak. Sneak's developer security platform helps developers build secure applications without slowing down. Fixing vulnerabilities in code, open source, containers, and infrastructure as code. To learn more, visit sneak.io forward slash TSD. That's S-N-Y-K dot I-O forward slash TSD. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning back into The Secure Developer. Today, we have another special mix episode, and this time we're going to focus on diversity and security. As I think we all know, we haven't really done an amazing job at making the security industry diverse, and myself and many others are very keen to help improve that. And I've been fortunate over the course of the years to have some really smart guests come on this show and share their views on why it matters or how they think about diversity as a whole, but also pragmatically a lot of techniques or approaches that they've taken to try and do better on this front. So hopefully this episode would help you not just relate to to the challenge, which hopefully you appreciate is important to address, but also practically think about how you can do something about it. To start us off, we'll have Nitsan Bluin from Spotify, who came into the world of security from QA and used that as an opportunity to really think about many of the core elements in security and the problems that she needed to solve from first principles. And she does a great job doing that precisely on gender diversity and actually doing very well in tackling it. So let's hear Nitsan talk about this challenge and how she approached it. So you've had the luxury and the pain here of needing to build up a team and hire for it. The world of security isn't well known for its diversity. And I'm sure you've encountered that as well. How did you approach? Like when you've hired, you already gave us an inkling around this need for programming or for engineering expertise. How did you approach this type of hiring for diversity or other attributes that are important as as you form your team? Yeah, that's a great question. So security is, uh, I think in general, the last time I looked at the data was a 12% diversity for gender, that is. So that's very low. I think overall, a benchmark is 15 for diversity and more, let's say, progressive air quotes organizations are at 20. Spotify is at 35 now after investing heavily in diversity and belonging strategies. So as a hiring manager, I feel it's it's that's one of my responsibilities. And it's actually one of the joys of being a hiring manager is you, you can really help uplift people from underrepresented groups. And, and in this case, for me, the gender piece naturally comes to mind. But of course, it's not the only determination, right? You, you pick the best person for the job in the end of the day. And lucky for me, I happen to build a team that's 75% female. And this is the first time in my career that that has happened. Yeah, and, and it's wonderful. It's a fun team to be part of. It's a very different dynamic in terms of, of our interaction. But what I really looked for is, I think, and this might be a bold statement, and you have more mileage on me in terms of security, but as a field in terms of people going to study to be a security engineer or someone saying, hey, I want to be a security engineer when I grow up, I don't think that that is very common or not common quite yet. So what I really looked for was people with strong engineering background, primarily backend, because that's the domain. And then with passion for security. And some I have one person in my team that has a master's in security and computer science. I have one person who has taken some courses in college. So there was a kind of a mix in terms of the skill set between people who came from tech background, people who came from security background. I like to mix also the regulated, unregulated, especially when it comes to security, because that brings a very different perspective into how good does your solution need to be. And someone who works in a bank or in a health organization has a different approach than someone who worked in a, another tech company. So I, I believe in building mixed teams and diverse teams, and you take that 
onto different access in terms of experience. And at the same time, I think also all of us who are privileged enough to be in a position of hiring people, we do have to think about underrepresented communities. How can we give people a chance? It does require more heavy lifting on the management side. If you take someone who is more junior, then you would need to give them more attention in the beginning, but that always pays dividends, always. Yeah, and, and how uh, I fully relate to the importance of this and social responsibility also as a white man here, like I think feel even doubly responsible that my uh, uh, <laughs> group, if you will, has sort of not solved or sort of contributed to the problem before, even more responsible to kind of help be a part of the solution. But also like indeed the challenge is oftentimes successfully doing so. You can be committed to it conceptually. So you give us one example with how we can approach it, which is you can hire maybe people that are more junior and invest in them. Are there other tips or examples of practices that people should embrace to help them do better in terms of hiring diverse candidates? Yeah, I think the other path that has worked well specifically for my team was really looking at the talent pool of backend and assuming that someone I mean, every hiring manager has this set criteria of, of what has to be there. In my case, it was coding skills. And then you take that side by side and you say, okay, maybe I have a very strong backend engineer who is passionate about security, but doesn't know much. Can I train them? And that has worked again for us. So we knew we would have a strong engineer who can start executing on engineering tasks right away. And then we also knew that we would be able to level up the security knowledge and best practices, et cetera, with specific trainings. I love that. So basically look at hiring pools or the queues for other teams that for one reason or the other, well, Maybe they did fit that team and you might steal them away, but you no, know, it could also be that they didn't have the specific knowledge for that team, but they were great candidates otherwise. And then tap into that resource and bring them in, scale them up in the areas that you need to build them up. Does that sound right? Yeah, exactly. And there is no perfect candidates, but I think what you need to make sure there is that spark or that curiosity or that passion to learn about security. If someone doesn't care about security, this doesn't work, right? So you need to have that base level. I think sometimes people get very hung up on finding a perfect candidate that ticks all the boxes. And at least in, in my experience, that doesn't exist. And then you think about work here, can you compromise? And if you do prioritize diversity and you often hear like, oh, there's pipeline is not diverse. And there's a lot of ways to make that pipeline more diverse and then to find, again, the best person for the job. And you don't have to limit yourself to diversity on the gender axis. There is race, there's age, and you build those diverse teams. And those are the strongest teams because your customers, guess what, are exactly going to be a mirror of that team. And if you're going to have a bunch of people who are just like you, you're probably not going to be able to solve for the problems that your customers are going to see. Next up, we're going to hear from Vandana Verma, who is actually fortunately now at Sneak. You know, when I was interviewing her, she wasn't here yet. Vandana talks a bit more broadly and just emphasizes how diversity isn't just gender diversity, but then also as we dig into gender diversity, has some good perspectives about how to think about it and maybe normalize it a little bit so we can, we can approach it better. Let's hear Vandana tell it. I know one of your recent keynotes has been about women in security, and I know you're also, you know, you're involved, you sort of mentioned quite a few different organizations that are doing it. Right. Let's dig into that a little bit, you know, like it's always a complicated topic. Before I dig into specific questions, what do you feel is kind of in, in the world of AppSec is the current state of affairs around diversity and specifically gender, gender diversity? Right. So my keynote was about that when we talk about diversity, it's not gender diversity, it has to be different forms as well because we kind of only think about the gender diversity and it actually creates a lot of concerns for the other gender as well. Because when I started uh, digging more into the topic and I've been in the industry for quite some time and I can see that there are people which are less. That's why we talk about diversity and it's very important. So if I have to talk about AppSec, not just AppSec, I would say the whole security it's like the diversity is very less. I would say that's one of the reasons wherein we have a lot of constraints wherein people are less insecurity. If we start including people from diverse background, 
we will have diverse perspective and the job concerns that are there wherein people say that we have so many jobs open but we are not able to find the right set of people and this is i'm fully there with you around the fact that diversity is a broader topic you know like whether it's location whether it's background whether it's age you know every perspective kind of brings a new skill to the mix you know like you give one tip there which is you know maybe like judge based on skills versus just the resume what other sort of techniques or methodologies have you sort of seen to to work well to help break through the fact that you know it's it's sometimes hard to find you know the diverse candidates so i would say that sometimes organizations target people to hire from the top schools top business schools top institutions we can actually partner with some organizations to include engineers from different colleges artists mathematicians and other creative professionals from a broad set of experiences rather than only looking for bright millennials how about hiring some veterans older professionals who are highly skilled because when we say diversity it goes far far beyond education and gender so if we hire those people i am sure we will have diverse perspective so let's say you and i are working in same team you will have a different perspective i will have a different perspective and i'm sure when there is a situation come in we will put forward our own views rather than just going with the same flow again sort of spot on and i think you know the value of diversity is great specifically you know kind of allowing me to stereotype a bit here and sort of still dig into that sort of the gender diversity bit right you know you work a lot with infosec girls and all that you know in this sort of you know white men kind of dominated surrounding sometimes i know you know like a common complaint like real concern is maybe surroundings what have you seen you know in through these organizations to be sort of good best practices if you're an organization leader or a security organization leader and you want to make sure that when you bring people that don't look like everybody they stay comfortable see i would tell you up front that there are problems for sure we have seen and heard the cases but let's say if i have to talk about gender diversity as a woman there are a lot of concerns that everyone has seen in some other other way but sometimes there are points or concerns which the other gender also has so it's like there's a term called alienating or alienating men right wherein the other gender also feels that we are trying to dominate them which is not the case because when i had a conversation with the friends who i have or the mentors because i have a lot of male mentors they also feel sometimes nervous or a bit concerned when the term diversity comes into picture why because it's like they think 100 times before saying anything because it might raise some concerns so the diversity concerns are from both the sides and both has to be worked upon and we have to talk it out if there is a concern we all have to talk it out and as a man if they see that there is some hesitation the other gender has they have to make the other person comfortable that this is my perspective it's not to bring you down or it's not to bully you and same goes for us also because i work with a lot of white men and i do a lot of discussions around diversity i do a lot of discussions about technical topics especially for my keynote i had discussions with n number of people with from all genders from all colors from everywhere so it's a kind of a topic wherein if i say my perspective somebody else might have a different perspective altogether so i would say it's it's a topic of discussion wherein if you feel that there is something which is not going right talk it out raise your voice and people are hearing it's not that people are don't hear people do hear yeah well i'm always in favor of communication it was interesting to hear about you know diversity and soliciting opinions about diversity over there as well <laughs> which is you know a kind of a good inception model there yeah. uh, so i have yeah, to add sorry, something to it i do support all the men and platforms but i don't resonate to just the gender diversity to be honest even being a woman i don't just resonate to it i have friends from different backgrounds i know people who are differently able so i wouldn't just say that it's just gender diversity i try and see that if there's a knowledge sharing platform it has to be for everyone not just for a specific gender diversity The next couple of sessions are going to get pretty pragmatic. The first one is from Tad Whitaker who talks about Day of Security or She Security, which is a great program that he's been a key player at getting going and and running at scale. So, 
that's a great program that you can think about. And then we'll have Tanya Yanka from We Hack Purple, who will talk about mentoring and maybe at a slightly smaller scale, not just raising a program, but rather, you know, just mentoring and doing something on your own, how you can participate and help nudge this needle in the right direction. Let's hear Tad and then Tanya share their stories. So that very first meeting that I went to at OWASP, I sat down next to this big burly guy wearing all black and he had all these DEF CON patches and everything. And he, you know, his head was the size of a bowling ball and it was all bald. I mean, he looked as menacing as they come, but he was this super cuddly guy named Matt Torben. I mean, like that's who I sat down at, at my very first OWASP meetup and we just became friends. And so he was a, a front end developer at RSA who really wanted to get into security. And so he made this big leap kind of at the same time that I did to switch over to security. And so he started working at a company as a security engineer. And I think he was their first one. And when they wanted to hire another one, all of the candidates were just white men. And he was frustrated by the talent pool because diversity and inclusivity was really important to him based on kind of his background and his history. And so he was telling like the head of hiring over there, I think that the company is Lookout. And he told him, he said, you know, if I could just get a room full of 10 women who came out of boot camps and teach them how to use burp suite over the course of about 10 hours, I would probably hire one of them. Like, they would have enough skills to get going to handle what we need here. And so they said, well, why don't we just do that? And so they organized this little 10 person hacker day where he showed about 10 women how to use, I think it was burp suite and they wound up hiring one of them. And so he was telling me about that. And it was like, dang, man, why didn't you let me know about that? You know, cause like I used to do a lot of mentoring through something called mission bit where I would go into public high schools here in San Francisco and teach JavaScript to low income students. And so we just started talking about it. And there was a recruiting company that just focuses exclusively on security engineers who had been recruiting me. And I said, hey, I don't want a job somewhere, but are you guys interested in trying to build out like a little workshop that would just help train women into security engineers? And so that turned into a full day event with 200 or 250 attendees. We had a bunch of people from Hacker One teach a full day on Burp Suite, you know, and a whole bunch of that stuff. And we've now had five of them. We've had three in San Francisco, one in Boston, one in Toronto, and we've got a couple of more scheduled this year. That's excellent. That's a, like a great story creative thinking and fundamental kind of initiative from it do you keep track like do you have like a a slack for kind of all the uh, alumni of this program or we do yeah we have a dedicated slack slack group to it the day of security and anybody who's gone and attended gets to be in there we have a job board and we have like a mentoring system in there and we're really trying to build it into a community more than just a workshop at this point. We've also started branching out into doing every other month meetups that are called Day of Security Presents. And those are all led by women. So I joined security because I had a mentor and quickly I found new, even more amazing mentors. And I am really lucky that uh, people seem to see possibilities and potential in me. And then I have noticed that if I pay my attention to someone else and show them the things that I know that they can blossom in ways I never even dreamed or they never even dreamed. So people started asking me to be their mentors. And I said, Oh, I already mentor for women. And I honestly, I feel like I don't even give them enough of my time. And I still haven't figured out how to make a cloning machine. And so until then, I thought, well, I'll just find you a mentor. So I started like introducing people to each other one-on-one, -on -one, which took a lot of time, right? So then one day I just tweeted this hashtag mentoring Monday. Like, are you looking for a mentor? Are you willing to share what you know with someone new to you? And then people started matching themselves and people started searching the hashtag each week. So people that are like maybe less public about their offerings, 
they'll see someone's call for a mentor and then they're messaging them directly and they're having private conversations and branching off. And several people have written me the most wonderful, wonderful messages about, you know, I now have these two people in my corner who are giving me advice. You know, one's giving me career advice and one of them's giving me technical things like read this book or like, you know, you should ask for a raise or have you tried applying here? And all of these people that are senior in our industry who didn't even realize, you know, like if you've done your job two or three years, you know enough to teach someone else because otherwise you'd be fired, right? Like if you still have this job, it's probably because you're good at it. <laughs> and so a lot of people who thought, oh, I don't know enough to be a mentor. I'm like, do you know enough to do your job? Because there's someone who wishes that they could have a job like yours, right? There's someone who wishes that they knew when they looked at the sim, what all of that stuff means. Well, you know, there's so many people who are interested in pen testing. And then a lot of them end up learning like I did that they actually want to work in AppSec where they actually want to build cool tools to help people do testing, right? And the more people you have in your corner that are willing, you know, to give you just even an hour of advice one-on-one, it's so valuable. And so just so many senior people have told me that it is so rewarding to see the person they're mentoring just break through every goal that they had. Give us some example and sort of you know, inspire the listeners a little bit. You know, maybe some examples of topics that people kind of reached out to mentor on or to be menteed on? <laughs> so a lot and a lot of people are interested in learning about forensics. Like, how do you even break into that? Or people want their very first AppSec job. A lot of people who used to work in networking, they want to work on a SIM. They want to be an information security analyst. And they just have no idea where to start. And, you know, they've got like a demo of a SIM and they're like, what does that mean? <laughs> Right. Or a lot of people come to me and they're like, I want to be a badass hacker. I'm like, oh, you probably shouldn't ask me because I'm a Care Bear hugging AppSec person. (laughs) But when they learn just how to run a scan for the first time, I'm like, okay, so now what do these results mean? And they look at me with these wide doe eyes. I'm like, go, go off and try to figure them out. I want you to try to fix a bug. Or a lot of people are interested, they're security people and they're like, I want to learn about DevOps. There's like 5 million books. Which one do I read? I'm like, okay read this book, then watch this talk, then read this book, then follow this guy. Last but not least, we're going to have Rinky Sethi from Twitter talk about her views. She talks about how she's evolved her view over time when she thinks about diversity. And really, if you go out to the macro level, how do we not just perpetuate the problem and solve it at a company level, but actually try to solve it at an industry level? I know you've, you've been on the uh, uh, Women in uh, Cybersecurity board, just kind of using the stage a little bit. If you're thinking, kind of have these two audiences, you know, there might be sort of uh, women listening, looking to get into security, looking to grow in security, if you have any tips for them, but also similarly, you know, for all us guys on it, you know, is there any tip of what we should start or stop doing to help encourage more diversity in this industry? This is an area, Guy, you know, I'm super passionate about. I just tweeted about this. And, you know, like my thinking around this topic evolves to I'm learning as well. But one of the things I'm realizing is I think we need to recruit more from colleges. When you look at computer science classes now, not all computer science classes. In fact, um, I just talked to a student that told me that she was the only girl in one of her computer science classes. And she was telling me that, hey, I can't even get my thoughts across because the guys won't let me talk on a project. And I've got good ideas and things like that. But Kind of, if you look overall, the number of women and men in in computer science programs, there's a lot of programs that have 50-50, but somehow then when you go look at engineering teams and especially cybersecurity teams, there's like a huge issue. And I think we need to, like what I tweeted was, we need to stop trying to get more women into our company by stealing from another company because we're not really helping with like improving the pipeline. So it's almost like we need to make commitment as an industry that we're going to go bring in X number of more talent from colleges. And I think that will introduce more diversity, that will introduce more women into cybersecurity. And also maybe from other fields where there's expertise, right? Like marketing, maybe those are folks that can help with security culture and So there's, I think, a lot more work that we need to do. 
you know, I always say this, it's a fact that women don't take as many risks as men. If you don't feel qualified for a role, we won't apply. Whereas someone who's not qualified for a role from men will apply. And I think women need to take risks, uh, go out there, reach out to folks and leaders. And I bet you that, that you would get like a reply back from a security leader looking for talent in the security space. We need more women in the field. I think we as leaders need to go and recruit more from colleges and also invest in younger in kids because you know I see uh, my daughter who's also uh, just turned 13 a couple of days ago this is when they're defining themselves they don't define themselves in when they're in ninth grade or in high school they start defining themselves when they're at this age and they're not introduced to technology in the right ways or programming nor cybersecurity or privacy and so I think it's really important at this age that they get introduced to it so then we have more girls entering colleges and I think anything people can do to teach more women, teach more girls, bring more uh, women into the industry to increase the pipeline is going to be super critical. Yeah, that really resonates with me. I think it's uh, really great. We have to actually grow the community. It's not just about you know, sort of uh, steal all the sort of the, uh, you know, diverse candidates and sort of women into into your company. It's about help fix the, the community. I think um, I rarely do, you know, sort of team plugs over here, but I'm just really proud of this is our um, leader of our SE team at Sneak, you know, was uh, we, we, we kind of woke up one morning and realized we have, you know, all men in our sort of sales engineering team. And we talked about it, we set out to sort of hire, it was really hard to sort of find, you know, sort of qualified and experienced uh, women in it. And he started this sort of internship program to bring women that are you know, they might have come from backgrounds, they, they weren't obviously qualified to it, an associate program, and that's been super successful. Like the team is far more diverse right now. I know that we don't know exact statistics. And then we we doubled down on it and we did uh, a whole program around uh, mothers returning from maternity leave, kind of a return to work people that not maternity leave, but rather, you know, that might have been out of, of, of the career ladder, you know, for a bunch of years coming into it. We get some amazing, amazing kind of uh, women join the company through it. So anyways, I'm sort of super proud of it. You know, it's just from, uh, I had nothing to do with it. It's all kind of the, the team initiated inside of it, but just was so great to see it. So I would love to hear more about that. I mean, you need to share that on, in terms of that internship program and what made it successful, because I think there's an analogy on the cybersecurity side on you might take some hits in the short term, right? Because you they're not going to be productive right off the ground, but here's the long-term benefits of it. And here's how you got them up to speed. I would be super interested in hearing kind of that story. That's really cool. That's it for today. I hope you learned something about diversity and approaches you can take. I hope you are as passionate as I am about tackling this problem and, and getting some of these bright minds that come from different backgrounds and specifically maybe different genders to help all of us make security as an industry, as a practice, just you know, actual results of protecting our customer data better and be a better community for it uh, in the process. Thanks for listening and I hope you join us for the next one. Thanks for listening to The Secure Developer. That's all we have time for today. To find additional episodes and full transcriptions, visit thesecuredeveloper.com. If you'd like to be a guest on the show or get involved in the community, find us on Twitter at at DevSecCon. Don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes if you enjoyed today's episode. Bye for now.